Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the 11th, the 11th season of Bangle Magazine. My glasses are a little thicker and my hair is receding, but I'm back for the 11th season of Bangle Magazine, and what a great show to kick off the season. Up first is Mark Hollett from Men's Soccer. They took a trip to England for about seven to ten days. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the upcoming season. And then Jerry Boys joins us, the head football coach of the Bengals, and Jerry's bringing along Dale Stewart, his outstanding running back from Niagara Falls. And then Nick DeMarsh, women's soccer, also went to England, and we'll talk about that trip as well. So we've got a great show. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back with Mark Howley. Well, we are joined now by men's soccer. Mark Howlett, the head coach of the Bengals, joins us, uh, along with Sammy Wasson, his uh, outstanding junior midfielder from Clarence, New York. And mom and dad, I'm calling him Sammy. That's what he wants, not Sam. So I just want you to know that. All right. Coach, uh, we, get, we get all that out of the way. Uh, you went to England uh, a little while ago, earlier this month in, in August. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious. How this whole, whole idea, you're from England, as everybody knows with your accent, but how did this whole idea come about taking the whole team over there for a little sightseeing, but some matches too? Um, it was interesting just because I had sort of said to myself that I would never do a trip like this. <laughs> 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 just because of <laughs> taking so many guys out of the country. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a massive deal. I didn't sleep um, that well during the trip, so <laughs> go ahead. So... Uh, but with the group that we had had and that we've we've now built here, right. I, I fully trust these guys and figured what an experience to be able to, one, go back to where I grew up yep. and, and show people Portsmouth, where, Portsmouth England, mm -hmm. what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, but two, I, I played for a lot of clubs on the South Coast uh, that are in uh, very close proximity that we would be able to go and play against and go and see the inside operations of these Fabulous. clubs. And from Bournemouth, who are in the Premier League, to Portsmouth, that are in uh, League Two, um, they would get a huge football experience of what it's like from the grassroots up All the way to up. the big time. Yeah, so. absolutely. So this guy comes to the team, and he's got a team meeting. I, I, I can only imagine how it was uh, presented to you, but he says, guys, what do you think about going to England early August to start training camp? And and you thought? I think it just kind of shocked everyone at first. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody was just so excited to get this opportunity, and nobody actually thought it would happen, but once we got closer and closer to it, everyone was just really yeah. excited about it. First trip overseas for you, Sammy? Yeah, or? it was my yeah. first trip. Wow, fantastic. Uh, you're over there, and there's business to be done. Certainly, you, you saw some sights and, mm -hmm. and, and that and an educational component. And, uh, but you had matches over there. You saw Wembley Stadium. Yep. I mean, Wembley, yikes, right? Uh, tell us about the matches and the competition that you faced. Um, so we actually ended up playing four games over there. Um, various levels. Uh, we played a, an academy team from London, which was compromised of guys that had been released from the Arsenal's, Tottenham's, Chelsea's, Yikes. that are now still looking to play. Okay. Um, so they kind of travel around, go into clubs. Clubs can have a look at them and see if any of them uh, wow. are good enough to take them. Okay. Um, so that was a, a fantastic experience. Again, these guys, you know, we're so fortunate here with the apparel and the mm -hmm. facilities and everything's all taken care of, the travel. You know, these guys rolled up in kind of a mini bus. Um, Is that they're all right? scrambling to get the uniforms together. Wow. And so, you know, and these are guys that have played at professional clubs within their youth systems and it doesn't phase them. It doesn't phase them. How about so that? Um, it, it was great to see in that, the <laughs> level, um, you know, the level, was pretty similar to where we're at. The biggest difference for me was when we made a mistake, we were punished for it. Is that right? Whereas, you know, for us, it will take three, four, five, maybe six chances to score a goal. Mm -hmm. We would make one mistake and they would, they would finish it. So, um, you know, very clinical on their, their part. Um, we then went to play uh, Bournemouth's under 18s. And again, we, we played them at uh, 
their under 21 facility where all of these guys are now full professionals. We turned up, it's in the middle of nowhere, there's a, there's a pitch there, and then shipping units as their dressing rooms. Wow. Um, and, and again, these guys wow. are on big money, and because it's not about facilities right. there, it's, it's not about facility the, it's driven, about the game. It's, it's you. We're focusing on developing you, and can we develop you How to go that? on to the next level? So it was very eye-opening for the guys. We turned up to our third game against a conference team, which is... Uh, fifth tier of England English soccer okay um, and referees didn't show up Yikes. so we have a, a dad <laughs> as the referee again didn't phase the other team wow. and for me I, I remember those days you, you yeah, go absolutely. and it's all organized but hey they don't show up well, what are you thinking about all this are you like <laughs> this is like wow this is kind of new and interesting and I can't believe they're doing it like this yeah it was a lot different than here but it was just a great experience and the with the dad at the as a ref, we were just just <laughs> just get on with it and yeah yeah it was a great you just time. wanted you just wanted to get going huh mm-hmm. competition level for you was it good for you did yeah. you and what did you learn through the process well it's always good to play against like other competition from around the world see where everybody else is at mm-hmm. and playing them was crazy yeah it was just a lot there it's, it's interesting from around the, you know you just said that from <laughs> around the world I yeah mean, that that is really very cool. You're ahead of the game then a little bit in terms of training. You come back from England, the, probably have a little rest, and boom, we're, we're back on the field. Uh, tell us about the team. And, uh, you know, I look at it and I see 12 upperclassmen, two freshmen. There's kind of, is there an expectation here for, for the Bengals here to put some W's up on the board this year? I think there has to be. Good. Okay. Um, I think we're at a point now where this is my fourth year here. We're starting to cycle through from the guys that uh, my first recruiting class are now seniors. Very good. Um, they understand what we're trying to do. They understand the culture. Uh, they are living the culture on a daily basis. Right. I think a lot of, uh, of good changes have happened. And I think that they're ready to also burst on the scene um, mm-hmm. to, to see where we can take this. Well, it was 10-7 and seven last year, 4-4 four and four in the conference. What's the feeling in the locker room? How do, how do your teammates feel about this year? Many of them are, are back from last year. I think we have a really good belief this year because we, we know how good we are, like one of the best uh, teams in program history, and we have great uh, depth this year. Right. So I think all we need is like a commitment instead of like a team commitment rather than being more individualistic. Right. And I think we're going to have an unprecedented amount of success this year. Fantastic. Coach, we've got about a minute and a half left. And, and you had mentioned that, you know, your, your first recruiting class has now been channeled through and this and that. And I, I like to know from other coaches, like, where you feel the state of your program is right now. Is it where you thought it would be when we hired you a handful of years ago? Um, I don't think it's quite there yet. Um, I think there's still more work to be done and, and we've still got to go out and look for those uh, higher level guys um, but I feel the progress we've made since I got here is, yep. has been pretty significant and I think that now we're people worry about playing us now very good whereas before it was uh, yeah. it may just be another win right so I think that we've now put that fear into opponents very good. and uh, you know, we'll continue to build on that and we'll continue to work on it on a daily basis. Very good. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being uh, on, on the show. You open uh, this Saturday, no, this Friday, I believe, in Rochester against RIT. It's right down the throughway. Go see some great <laughs> Division Three soccer when the Bengals take on RIT. A quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk football, and Jerry Boyce joins us. Stay with us. Well, there's the uh, upcoming home schedule for the Bengals uh, for the fall teams. And uh, we kick things off Friday night, 5 o'clock, the annual Daniel Walker cross-country meet. That's at Beaver Island State Park on Grand Island. Uh, Go cheer on the Bengals. And then Saturday is football. Uh, Season opener at home at Coyer Field. Otterbein of Ohio is in town. The Cardinal and the Bengals take to the field at noon. Tickets are $5.00. And I'm hearing, uh, Coach and Dale, that it's going to be uh, 78 and sunny. So a great day to come out and cheer the Bengals on. 
uh, Saturday, this Saturday at Coyer Field. And uh, I did mention Jerry and Dale, Jerry Boyce, the head coach in his 23rd season. Uh-oh, as head coach of the Bengals, he's reflecting already. And Dale Stewart is outstanding running back from Niagara Falls. And uh, welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Jerry, I want to go back one year. Uh, good season last year, 7-4. and four. Uh, but I think there is this thought that there were some games left on the table that could have gone into the W column, but instead went into the L column. And I'm curious how you reflect on that season and also how you, if you do, utilize that for motivation with this team. Well, I think what you always want to do is, is uh, hopefully use last year as lessons uh, learned, you might mm -hmm. say, Tom. Because, yes, I, I would say we, we left, uh, if you will, some strokes out, out on the course, you oh, might say. Oh, I like that. Um, Very nice analogy. You know, I've said before, yes, 7-3, uh, and three, regular season, and a, and a, Sorry. And a bowl game. Correct, right. Um, and, and I've said to the players, and Dale knows this, that you know, after the season last year, you walk across campus and people on campus say, hey, coach, good season. Yeah. And, and I, will, I will say, yes, good season. <laughs> but it was a disappointing season, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I'm sure they will attest that the players felt the same way because we beat who we needed to and yet lost yeah. to some teams that we, yeah. that we feel Correct. we should not have lost to. So it was a disappointing season, even mm -hmm. though a lot of people would be very happy with 7-3. and three. So every year is a new year. Yep. Uh, new personalities, new leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're... we're wait to see how the team takes on the personality, mm -hmm. see what it is. And yet you do talk about some of the, the lessons that we hope we have learned, sure. but yet not dwell on that. Right. Uh, because it's, right now we, we have a home game and that's gotta be the con concentration and, and uh, doing what we need to do and, and uh, to play a good, successful type of football. Sure. Dale, when you look back on last season, that must stick with you, though. I'm hoping the message is clear, and as you reflect back, you realize that maybe there's a couple, we can't let that happen again. You sense that in the locker room and with yourself? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm a big competitor. Yep. You know, I hate losing. You're a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate losing. My teammates hate losing. I right. mean, when you're down in the stretch and, and you lose to a team that you really shouldn't lose to, it's, sure. it's a big upset. So, yep. Yep. I mean, this season, I feel like everything working. Everybody know their place. Great. You know, nobody's trying to do more than what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we should be successful. Jerry, is, um, this is the eighth season back for you on your second stint, 23 overall. And I was reading your comments in the Buffalo News. And, um, you know, I'm kind of curious, where do you feel the program is right now? Is it, quote, unquote, back to where, you know, maybe during your first tenure as coach? Or are there a couple more steps to get it, quote, unquote, back? Well, there's a, a, a degree of satisfaction of where we have come. Okay. Um, and uh, again, going through a, a rebuild, you might say. You don't get the chance to do that, particularly at the same institution. Um, so we've taken a lot of the same, um, we've repeated history to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, back in 86, uh, four years later, with our first group of freshmen, we win our first ECAC Bowl. Okay. Um, that held true with this particular cycle as well. Mm -hmm. um, back then, in the fifth year, we went to the NCAA playoffs. Correct. Uh, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So we didn't quite repeat history. So I, I, that's why I say there's a, there's a degree of satisfaction of mm -hmm. where we have been able to come back to uh, but we have some unfinished okay. business time. Dale Stewart, all Empire 8 second team last year, uh, special teams player of the week, one week, uh, 130, 130 carries, 868, an incredible six and a half yards per carry. As you move into your junior year now, those are some fabulous numbers and statistics. Where do you see your game headed this year? Um, I would love to get 1,000 yards. Okay, I'm, great goal. I'm, Definitely going to keep my yards at six. Um, I, I just want to win. There you I'm go. I'm a winner. I, I just want to win every game. I mean, I, want, I put my heart out there every time I play. There's nothing left. 
I'm pretty sure y'all could tell. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, from, from my point of stance, I just want to, I would, I would love to be first team. You know, second team is great, but right. first team is better. So Yeah, and, and if the team does well, you're probably doing well, and yes. those accolades will come at the, at the end of the year. Um, Coach, you lost 31 players from last year. Uh, it, it, we set off camera. It's, it was the largest senior day uh, I have ever seen in, in my 30 years of athletics. 30, 31 kids came out with their parents, et cetera. How do you replace 31, of which uh, seven of the 11 All-Empire uh, Bengals last year are no longer with the team? And from what I understand, the offensive line is brand new. And if you, if you just look at the, uh, that sentence, you kind of go, whoa. Uh, how does the head coach uh, sleep at night, and how are you replacing all those people? Uh, does, <laughs> it doesn't bother uh, time. Uh, if uh, you've been doing the, the job correctly okay. from a recruiting standpoint and uh, recruiting young men who understand those uh, aspects of what it takes to be successful, mm -hmm. yes, names are, are going to come and they're going to have their success and they're going to graduate. Right. Um, but if, again, if we're doing it right, the names and the faces may change, but the success remains. Okay. And that's what I fully expect. Um, we have some, I think, uh, very, very capable people um, on both sides of the ball at all positions. What we lack is playing experience. There you go. Uh, so we've asked them to fail fast and do it a lot during preseason. <laughs> um, uh, Dale likes that one. <laughs> we, we did some at, at our scrimmage, I hope. And what has to go from that is, all right, we don't repeat those mistakes sure. on a Saturday. Sometimes they may be new mistakes, but we don't repeat old mistakes. So, you know, the early parts of the season are kind of important to us to get these young men who haven't, who have the skill set, but haven't had the game experience, mm -hmm. to get the experience, mm -hmm. to, to be in the fray, uh, make those mistakes, learn from them, and each week, we, we continue to improve. Right. It's a long season. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And I wish you both the best of luck. You kick things off this Saturday at Coyer Field against Otterbein of Ohio. Gentlemen, thanks very much for being on the show. Another quick break. When we come back, women's soccer joins us. Well, welcome back to Bango Magazine. Uh, another soccer program joins us, women's soccer, and Nick DeMarsh, uh, the head coach of the Bengals, along with uh, Victoria Kaladi from uh, New Windsor, New York. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yes. Fabulous. Okay. Victoria's a little nervous, so we're going to calm her down with a big smile. There it is. Big smile. <laughs> Nick, you, you, you also went to England uh, August 4th through the 12th. Yeah. Um, how does, where did that idea come from? Uh, for you and tell us how you're able to do that per the NCAA. Do they allow things like that? Sure, so the NCAA, uh, NCAA allows a big international trip once every four years. Four years, uh, okay. And we decided to do this uh, four years ago. We had plans to go to Brazil. The economy kind of <laughs> yes. dropped out. The Brazil trip became impossible, so we went to California. We kept it you know, in-house here in the mm -hmm. U.S., mm -hmm. um, but this was the, the next cycle. So mm -hmm. four years later, we decided, you know, we, we look pretty good with our fundraising, with some of our donors coming in sure. at a Absolutely. big amount that we, uh, we, it was possible for us to raise enough money to do a big trip to somewhere in Europe. Right. And we talked about it as a staff and thought the easiest place, particularly because of the language barrier or anything else, the safest place, the home of soccer, let's go to England. The home of soccer. So he comes football. to the team. Football. Mm -hmm. That's right. I can't believe you said that, Nick. That's, yeah, well, I will never let you. When you're in England, down. you say football. You know, you play on a pitch, too, by the way. Correct. I know that. So don't say field, okay? That's right. So he comes to the team, and he's got this announcement. How would you like to go to England? And what did you think right away? Um, I just <laughs> thought it would be amazing. I've never done anything like that before, like go out of the country like that. I mean, we've gone to Canada, but I feel like yeah. that being here, that's like <laughs> that's normal kind of our now. Country, yeah. Isn't <laughs> so, we claim Canada yeah. for ourselves. <laughs> so going across seas like that, it was amazing. Yeah. Your favorite part of the trip? 
everything, sightseeing, the fact that we got to play over there, we got to play against professional teams, train with professional coaches, okay. uh, everything about it. The Any sightseeing. turbulence on the plane trip over? Were you yeah, nervous? a little bit. <laughs> you were okay with that? I was that. okay with that. A couple okay. other people weren't so okay. much. Oh, but. You know, she brought up the sightseeing. I, I, I think it's, it's a great opportunity. Certainly you, you've got some game, matches in and there was some training, but, but the team also saw London and England. Tell sure. us a little bit about what you had in mind. Well, uh, you know, again, we, we spoke at length as a staff about what we wanted out of the trip, and we didn't want it to be a purely, almost like a pre-preseason training sure. trip. Right. We wanted it to be a cultural experience. Very good. So we decided to do some of the North Country. So mm -hmm. we did Manchester, mm -hmm. Liverpool, mm -hmm. and then come down and spend um, the last part of the trip in London. And every part of the trip had something Mm -hmm. cultural involved. It wasn't just, you know, when we were in Liverpool, sure we did Anfield, but we also did the Beatles Museum and did some walking around, you know, downtown Liverpool. Um, so we, we, we always wanted to make sure that there, it was going to be as much of an educational experience sure. to kind of give the girls culture um, while also getting some practices in and getting some games in. And, and uh, you knew who the Beatles were before you yeah. went to the I just want to make sure because you're, you're so young. And, then, and tell us about the matches. You know, what, who did you play sure. over there and how did that all transpire? So we didn't really know too much. And maybe bad on me, I should have done a little bit more research. But the first game we played, um, we played against the Blackburn Rovers. And there... The, Sounds the, impressive. The, 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 the <laughs> men's team... The professional men's team had been recently relegated from the premiership down to the championship. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm not sure if I just assumed what the women's team would be like, but they were incredible. Um, really? They're in the top okay. division. They play in the Super League, <laughs> and um, they taught us a few lessons on that day. That was a wow. that was a lot to a little, and okay. we did a lot of time. We spent a lot of time chasing the ball. Okay. Um, but it was good because it was a great opportunity for us to look at that film after they they, sure. they gave us the film. Right. And Every time a player stepped out of their position and made a tactical error, it was exposed. Wow. It wasn't as though you could cheat right. and get away with it. And sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes we can. And you can. we actually right. win games because we kind of skip steps sometimes. Gotcha. But that team wouldn't allow it. Wow. The second game we played um, was in London against West Ham, which is a massive club. Their, their professional men's team are in the premiership. Um, their women's team is in the second division. Okay. Uh, and wow. we played them, and they were very good, and they played excellent soccer. Um, but we were able to kind of impose ourselves on them. We we fixed a few things from the last game, and um, we actually were able to come out with a victory in that game. Very nice. So. I like the word impose when you impose yourself on a, another well, team. That's, that's kind of our style. Such a mean word for yeah. Them. How were the games for you? I mean, that first game sounded like. There was a lot of jaws dropped and this and yeah. that, but but the competition had to be good, you, I'm, and to see how, as as Nick said, the mistakes mm -hmm. and the good things too. Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, of course, they were great teams. Uh, very fast pace, less mm. uh, short passing. Okay. Uh, kind of passed around us a little bit sometimes. Yeah, sure. But I thought it was great that as our team, we were able to face that competition. Yeah. I thought we stepped up, especially in the second game. We played a lot better, but um, just to face kind of. A different team. Yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> it's not a Cortland. It's not a Brockway. Yeah, it's not a yeah. Genesee. It's, uh, it's, the, it's thing the real is, deal. They're professional teams. These are players that are pay, <laughs> paid to play. That's all they do, probably. And you could tell. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's talk about this season. So we've got this early training camp going here in England, and I look at this young lady, and I, I studied her this morning. So you have a little pattern going here, Victoria. Two years ago, your third team all Suniac. Last year, your second team all Suniac. This year, your. How do you look on your progress, and what do you expect from yourself? Um, I just expect myself to get better and do better each and every day, and do whatever I need to help the team, okay. and work as hard as I have to to help the team. About a minute and a half left. Uh, Great year last year, 15-4-1 overall. More importantly, undefeated in the conference, went to the championship game. Not the result you want. Uh, most of the team is back. We lose an All-American in Gabe. Uh, is that out there dangling? Is that the motivation for this team, that championship game? How do, you, how do you approach this season, and do you use last season at all? You know, again, we've built for a long time to get to where we are. Yep. Um, you don't want to let it slip. But every season is new, um, and you bring in one player, you lose one player, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and one player is not a team, but one player can make a difference. Well, we start sprinkling in uh, this weekend at Farmingdale State, a uh, little tournament this weekend in Farmingdale State. So, Nick, Victoria, wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much for being on the show. Thanks, Tom. We are going to wrap it up here at Bango Magazine. Thanks to everybody in Instructional Resources and, of course, my guest. And we'll see you in two weeks for more Bango Magazine.